So one of the ideas behind templating is that we want to take any place where we're generating HTML and put it into a template file. So if we look at the way we build our block, I'm going to go to trails history block, and we look at how we're building the output here, we're wrapping list item tags around each item, and then finally we're wrapping an unordered list tag around those and adding a paragraph above that. So this is all markup. This is stuff that shouldn't be in our code. We should allow the front end developer instead to decide what this should look like, even if that front end developer is us as well. So this is a good use case for converting this into a template. Now, just like we've done with all of the other examples leading up to this point, as we've been upgrading our module, let's try to find some example code to work with that can provide a basic structure for the template file that we're going to have eventually. If we did a search across file names for .twig, we'd see a number of files here, and all of them end in a .html.twig extension. Now each one of these is a template file, and we can scroll down and see multiple ones. Now what I'm looking for is something simple, and also something that I recognize, so I know that I kind of know what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the template. Okay, so this feed icon.html.twig might be just that one, I'm going to open it up. What I assume this is, is what we see on the home page and in views. I'm going to jump to the browser and go to the home page here. When we see this little icon here, it's the icon that we always try to hide various ways through CSS or something else. If you've worked with Drupal at all, you know what I'm talking about. So this seems pretty dang simple. I'm going to jump back to the editor here. And in fact, if we look at the template, it's just an A tag and it pulls in the URL, it pulls in attributes and the icon itself. So as you can see, the syntax of this is very different from PHP template, which is what we used in Drupal 7. Instead of using PHP echo statements, we're using double mustaches or curly brackets here. And we don't have to use any specific indicator to say that this is a variable of some kind. So you don't see a dollar sign, for example. Now something that's pretty neat about the way that Twig renders these variables here is that this variable doesn't have to be a string. It can actually be a set of other types of variables as well. So for example, this attributes here isn't a string, it's actually an array. But this will get rendered as a string when we wrap the double brackets around it. We could also pass in a particular method as well that will return a string. But the cool thing is that they all look the same in the template. They all look as if they're strings, but they're a bit more powerful than that. Okay, so this seems like a good place to start. Now, where is this located? So this is inside a templates folder inside of the system module. So I think what we're going to do is find this, copy it, and put it inside a templates folder in our trails module. Now I'll use a keyboard shortcut to find this in the file explorer. I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to go to our trails module, create a new folder called templates. And I'll open it up and paste this in here. Now I'm going to call this trailslist.html.twig. We could call this something like block, but I'm thinking that this is a general enough template that we could use it outside of the context of a block as well. Like if we wanted a page that showed a trail, we could do that with the same template potentially. So we'll just call it trails list, and let's open this up in our editor. 